Welcome back to MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic. It is Sunday fun day here at the channel, and in today's video, we're going to add another 15 cards to our changeling pool as we continue to strengthen our Morph and the Boundless Shapeshifter Tribal with Changeling EDH deck. <laughs> What's up, MTG Burgeoning community? It is Sunday Fun Day, and that's right, baby. Our changeling pool is about to get 15 cards deeper. We are going to continue with our current deck building series around our oh so favorite shapeshifter with changeling, Morph and the Boundless. If you missed any of the previous installments of this series, you can click the links in the description below. As a quick refresher, we solidified an 84 card deck including more offended boundless as our general for a total of 85 cards and now we are going to continue to deepen the pool of potential changeling resources that will be shuffled out randomly each time we sit down to play with this deck 15 cards at a time the first 30 cards entered to this changeling pool very briefly are as follows did you redo skemfar avenger Full Moon's Rise, Scarblade Elite, Kithkin Mourncaller, Risen Reef, Death Baron, Ferris Band Warchief, Daru Warchief, Saki, Daughter of Sajiro, Kazul Warlord, Regisaur Alpha, Biogenic Ooze, Godo Bandit Warlord, Sashiro the Anointed, Pack Leader, Ayula, Queen Among Bears, Bishop of Wings, Drog Skull Captain, Yuriko, the Tiger Shadow, Captivating Vampire, Goblin Chieftain, Aura, Skyclave Hierophant, Sea Hunter, Calamity Bearer, Timber Protector, Docent of Perfection, Final Iteration, Maronar, Tulsimer, Friend to Wolves, and Utvara Hellkite. Each of these 30 cards are representative of one of Magic's tribes. These other 30 cards are also representative of 30 of Magic's tribes. Combined, we're going to have 60 cards representing 60 different tribes throughout Magic the Gathering's history that will all be randomly pulled in order to have our finalized 100 card or 99 card deck and one commander shapeshifter train changeling tribal. So here we go folks we got a left pile we got a right pile which one are we going to do? Well 1d6 we got 1 through 3 we got 4 through 6 and the die will dictate what we play and we're going to go with the pile on the left. So we will exile the pile to the right only until we meet next time. So let's take a look at the next 15 cards we're going to include in our changeling pool. And card number one is Soul Catcher's Airy. We got an enchantment here for one and a white. And whenever a bird is put into our graveyard from play, we put a feather counter on this enchantment, and all birds get plus one, plus one for each feather counter on Soul Catcher's Airy. Of course, just to reiterate, since all of the shapeshifters, well, let me reframe that, nearly all of the shapeshifters included in this deck have changeling, they are all creature types. So all cards pulled from the changeling pool will affect each of the shapeshifters with changeling in our deck. So since all of our shapeshifters with changelings are birds, when they die, they're going to put feather counters on this enchantment, therefore pumping the power and toughness of the rest of our quote-unquote birds, which are, of course, shapeshifters with changeling. So Catcher's Airy is card number one. Next up, we have Lord of the Unreal. For two blue, we have a 2-2 human wizard. An illusion creatures we control get plus one, plus one, and have hex proof. So that's right, folks. Our shapeshifters with changelings, they're birds, and they're illusions. And now they have plus one, plus one, and hex proof. 
Thank you so much, Lord of the Unreal. Card number three is Wirewood Savage. For two and a green, we have a 2-2 two -two body. Whenever a beast comes into play, we draw a card. We may draw a card. I like that it's may draw a card. Sometimes when they just say draw a card, it makes me feel a little nervous because you never know what happens in a game of Commander. And you never want to end up drawing yourself out by <laughs> having an effect that forces you to draw a card. So Wirewood Savage is going to be the beast representative of this deck. And notice that it says whenever a beast comes into play, it does not have to be a beast that comes into play under our control. So if we have Wirewood Savage out there and one of our opponents puts a beast into play, we may or may not draw a card. Wirewood Savage, you are our beast representative. Card number four, Scion of Una. Two and a blue for a 1-1 one, one fairy soldier. Has flash, has flying, gives other fairies we control plus one plus one, and other fairies we control have shroud. So with Scion of Una next to Lord of the Unreal, our changelings should have protection from any spot removal spell that could be out there in Magic's history. So Scion of Una, you are our fairy representative. And card number four of this third 15 card pile adding to our changeling pool. Card number five, there he is, General Kudro of Dranith. One white and a black. We have a 3-3 three, three legendary human soldier that reads other humans get plus one, plus one. So that means our shapeshifters with Changeling are getting a power and toughness boost in the presence of the great general. And whenever the general here or another human ETBs under our control, we can exile a card from an opponent's graveyard. Better yet, we can tap two and sacrifice two humans, again, humans is italicized, to destroy target creature with power four or greater. So General Kudro, you are our human representative. And card number five. Next up, card number six, we have Balthor the Stout. One in double red for a 2-2 two, two dwarf legend. All barbarians get plus one, plus one, and it gives all Barbarians the ability for Fire Breathing, which is every mountain you tap, target Barbarians going to get plus one, plus zero until the end of turn. Balthour the Stout is our Barbarian representative. Next up, we have Wing Splicer, three and a blue for a 1-1 one, one human artificer. When it ETBs, we create a 3-3 three, three colorless golem artifact creature token. More importantly, however, golem creatures we control have flying. You guessed it, folks. Wing Splicer is the golem representative of this pool of changeling cards. Next card up, we have the Rot Widow Pack. Two, a black and a green. It's a 2-4 spider with reach, and it has the following ability. We can tap three black and a green and exile a creature card from our graveyard. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we can create a 1-2 green spider creature token with reach. Then each opponent loses one life for each spider we control. So as our, of course, shapeshifters with changeling are also spiders, having the Rot Widow pick, the Rot Widow pack out there in play is going to provide us with a very nice drain life feature that we otherwise did not have. So the Rot Widow pack is our spider representative. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay. Next up, we have the Kavu Monarch. Two and double red for a 3-3 three, three Kavu, giving all Kavu trample. Kavu is a creature type that is not very well represented throughout Magic's history. However, when we're talking about Morophon, all tribes are equal, baby. So the Kavu have a spot, and the Kavu Monarch is the Kavu representative. Whenever another Kavu comes into play, we can put a plus one, plus one counter on the Kavu Monarch. It itself has trample, so each time one of our shapeshifter with changelings come into play, the Kavu Monarch will grow just a little bit bigger. Plus, the Monarch gives all other Kavu trample. So, our Kavu representative, you are going into the pool. All right, next we have the Synapse Sliver. Four and a blue. Whenever a sliver deals combat damage to a player, its controller may draw a card. 
So as you guessed it, folks, this is going to be our sliver representative whenever one of our shapeshifter with changelings deals damage to a, deals combat damage to a player. We may draw a card. So we're going to keep our hands full so we can keep casting all of those wonderful changelings. Next up, as we wind down with this current crop of 15 cards, we have Zarethsan the Trickster. Three blue and a black. It's a 4-4 four, four merfolk rogue with flash. And it has the following ability. We can tap two blue and a black and return an unblacked I'm sorry, an unblocked attacking rogue we control to its owner's hand. Then we can put Zarethsan, the trickster, from our hand onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. Whenever Zarethsan deals combat damage to a player, we may put target permanent card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under our control. So Zarethsan here is our rogue representative in our changeling pool, and it has features pretty similar to Yuriko the Tiger's Shadow. If one of our changelings is attacking and is unblocked, we are going to flash in Zareth San and have this ability, of course, go right into, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, from our hand, we will tap two, a blue and a black. We'll put Zareth San into play. It won't be blocked. It'll deal combat damage. And suddenly we're grabbing a permanent card from that opponent's graveyard, a permanent card. All right, Zarathon, you are our rogue representative. And we're almost done here, folks. Next card up is the Cataran Enforcer. Three and double black for a 4-3 mercenary. It says Cataran Enforcer can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and black creatures. That, my friends, is the fear mechanic. This is a card that predates the keywording of that mechanic it is fear. So we have a 4-3 fear, and we can tap 4 and tap this mercenary to search our library for a mercenary card with converted mana cost 4 or less and put that card directly into play. So this is another tutor out of our library into play card, similar to Sea Hunter with Merfolk that we saw in the last installment of this series. However, since all of our shapeshifters with Changeling are also mercenaries, the Cataran Enforcer is going to fetch out any of those from our library right into play as long as its mana value is four or less. Cataran Enforcer, you are our mercenary representative. Next up, and we only have a few more to go, folks. Three left. We have the Gilt Leaf Arch Druid for three and double green. It's a 3-3 three, three Elf Druid, and whenever we cast a Druid spell, we may draw a card. We may tap seven untapped Druids we control and gain control of all lands target player controls. So as you can guess here, Gilt Leaf Arch Druid is our Druid representative in our Changeling pool. And whenever we cast a Changeling spell, we're drawing a card. We're giving the option to draw a card. We're not being forced to do so. We may draw a card. If we're lucky enough to tap seven untapped Changelings, we're, gaining, uh, we're taking control of another player's land base. I'm not sure how well that will play within a metagame, so maybe Guilt Leaf Arch Druid finds its way near the back of the Changeling pool, maybe over in the deep end of that same pool. <laughs> Next up, and we've only got two more in this pool, baby. Two more for these 15. This is number 14, and we have an oldie going all the way back to the time of Odyssey. So this is about 20 years ago almost. Four and two blue for Aboshin, the Cephalid Emperor. It's a 3-3 legendary Cephalid, and we can tap an untapped Cephalid we control to tap target permanent. And additionally, we can tap three blue to tap all creatures without flying. So, of course, this creature is going to be our Cephalid representative in our changeling pool. And as long as we have some shapeshifter with changelings in play, or we're gifted with a protected maskwood nexus, we're going to be able to tap any of our creatures to tap target permanent. We can pretty much take control of the game if we have that following setup under the battlefield and in our control. Abishin, you are our Cephalid representative. And last, and certainly not least, particularly with this 15, we have our Scarecrow representative, 
That's right, baby. The king is in the house. Reaper King is card number 15 in this installment, and it is our Scarecrow representative. So look at that mana cost. It's either or many different possible mana values. We can tap a white, blue, black, red, green, and cast this baby for five, or we can tap any combination of those colored mana symbols in addition to, I'm sorry, or the two colorless mana equivalent of each one of those colors. So for the purposes of a long-winded explanation, Reaper King is going to cast, is going to cost us anywhere between five and 10 mana, but I don't think it's ever going to cast us 10. So the Reaper King is a 6-6 six, six legendary, it, it can't pop, well, I suppose, eh, maybe. It probably shouldn't with all the number of uh, multicolor of all the dual lands we have in the deck. It should never cast. It should never cost us ten to cast this. It should really, truly only cost us five. So we should look at the Reaper King as a Ruberg creature, a white, blue, black, red, green. It's a six six, and it gives other Scarecrow creatures we control plus one plus one. So it acts as a Lord, but <laughs> but let's not focus too much on the power toughness boost. The Reaper King is in this deck for its other wall of text, and that reads that whenever another Scarecrow comes into play under our control, we destroy target permanent. And of course, because our shapeshifters have Changeling, they are also Scarecrows. So if the Reaper King is in play and we're getting other quote-unquote Scarecrows onto the battlefield, we're choosing exactly which, which permanents we're going to destroy because of the Reaper King's second ability. So Reaper King, you are our Scarecrow representative, and you are going to be a powerful force in this changeling pool. You are number 15 of this video. And that will do it for this latest installment of our Morphin the Boundless Shapeshifter Changeling Tribal Deck. We have 15 more cards to add which we'll do next time. And again, if you missed any of the previous episodes of this of this series, click the links in the description below. Check out the full deck list at this point in time at the tappedout.net page. And let me know what you think in the comment section below. This is MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic.